In today's tutorial let's do the Bernat Pipsqueak Star. This is a great little blanket and it has six points. Let's begin to do this next. Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. Today we're gonna work on the Bernat Pipsqueak Star Blanket. This is a six point star and this is the exact same pattern as the fluffy unicorn that has been demonstrated in the Bernat Blanket Brights yarn that I will have. So it's demonstrating pip squeak yarn today and here's a mini example of what you're gonna be seeing today. And this here, do you see any stitch work? No, absolutely not. It completely fills in and one thing that I was really taken back on this particular example is that in the corners there's usually a lot of major gaps especially in the center pieces right here and I'll demonstrate that in just a moment. But I was really captivated because a lot of parents express concern when their baby Afghans have too many holes or too many gapping spaces in it. So the Bernat Pipsqueak yarn is a really quite a fluffy yarn. If you were to water this down though it's almost like uh, watering down uh, a Pomeranian dog where all the fluff is going away but I can physically feel the stitches in behind. Let me demonstrate what I'm about to show you here. In today's demonstration I will be using different yarn but I can physically feel the stitches. So though I can't see them um, I can feel them. In behind and here I'm on a point because I can feel that there's a gap. So this uh, particular afghan can be done in Bernat Pipsqueak yarn but you have to be familiar with this particular product and actually have some uh, feeling in the end of your fingers in order to feel where the stitches are going to go just like so. So I can work all the way around with this particular afghan. So what I want to demonstrate to you is the gapping spaces that will not appear in the middle and then we're going to then jump to the actual tutorial of using yarn that you can physically see the stitch work in. When I originally evaluated this pattern whether I was gonna do a tutorial with it or not I could not see if that there was any gapping spaces in the middle. So here's a point and you can see a little bit of them here and here but I couldn't see the one in the middle and I figured it's just the way that the baby's sitting that you can't physically see it. Because what is typical in these kind of stars is that you usually have the gapping spaces here leading to the points but you also have gapping spaces right in the middle because the material is bending and flexing. And what you're gonna notice on here is that we're gonna demonstrate this with the, the Bernat Brights using the fluffy unicorn pattern but you will see that in the middles here there is no breaking spots. Okay there's very little and what's gonna happen is that we have two different rounds that we're gonna do. The first round we're gonna have a bit of a gap and then the next round we fill it in. So then you only end up with the, with the end peaks having a little bit of gapping spaces. So this is uh, one of those afghans that really surprised me. So once you understand two rows of this or two rounds all of these are just a repeat pattern of it but they're just telling you that there's more stitches in between the corners. So let me explain what's uh, gonna be happening here. So as you get bigger okay each round takes more yarn and therefore gets bigger with every round. So that means that there's gonna be more stitches between this point in the middle and then this point to the next point just like this. And so as you do that then it just becomes making sense in this pattern is that you're just physically following through. So as long as you understand that there's two different rounds in this. So in this green you can see that there's a bit of a gap this time but the next time it filled it in. So the next one you can't really see it but there's a bit of a gap and the next time you fill it in. So we're, what we're gonna do today is in this particular pattern is that we're gonna be demonstrating it just like this this pattern here. So it has a color scheme if you would like to match this. In my particular one that I have what you have here is that you can see that there's two rows of blue and one row of white in order to maintain it. Again that's your personal choice on the colors that you would like to be able to do with this particular afghan. And finally before we jump to the Bernat Brights version of this particular tutorial you should know that you can make this blanket in any size that you wish as long as the complements the hook and the yarn to each other. So on the yarn ball if it says that it's a four millimeter recommended hook or size G then, then you can use that and follow this exact same pattern. It will just take you longer to get bigger and etc. So that's the just the kind of the key concept. So on this particular afghan it's asking for a US size K or a six and a half millimeter crochet hook using the pips, pip squeak yarn but on the Bernat Brights what we're gonna do is a size L eight millimeter and then use a lot thicker yarn in order to do so. So without further ado let's uh, head on to the tutorial for Bernat Blanket Brights and it's exactly the same stitch work you just have to be able to follow along. So let's begin today I'm gonna start off with a slip knot and we're gonna begin. And so we're gonna start off with the red color. I'm just using orange just because it looks easier to see on the backdrop. So what we're going to do today is that we're going to start as chaining five. 
So one, two, three, four and five. This is the center ring of your entire afghan and let's just take up the last chain and put it onto the hook, yarn over and pull through everything just like this. And so then your center ring is right here. What I want you to do is take this yarn strand that the loose one and just loop it up over top and then we're gonna trap that into position and we're gonna start off with round number one. So let's begin in round number one. So you're gonna notice in this particular pattern is that the pattern established uh, will not start until row number three. So but we have to get there first before we can do the repeat patterns. So let's begin. We're going to chain up two which does not count as any stitch in this particular pattern and what we want to do is that we wanna put 12 half double crochets around the center of the ring. So just yarn over going into the center of the ring pulling through and then pulling through all three at the same time. So that was one of one of twelve. So we're gonna do this again. So we're gonna have two and three four five six seven we got eight nine, ten and if you're running out of space because you've gone it's around the center of the ring just move just yank on it and move it out of position. So we had ten, 10 done already and then eleven and twelve. So now that you have your twelve in you're gonna go to the top of the first half double crochet and just kind of pull on it and look for it. Okay it's right there. Okay see this was the chaining of two that doesn't count as anything so we go in the top of the first half double crochet to join it with the slip stitch just like this. And it's gonna look really tight right now but it'll settle down in just a moment. So let's move it along to row number two. Do not change your color to yet. So row number two we're gonna carry on. So even if you're doing the pipsqueak version uh, this is exactly the same stuff. So don't uh, think it's not. It, it's all the same. So we're gonna start off by chaining one and right where you've done the slip stitch we are going to put one single crochet into that same stitch. Then we're gonna move to the next stitch and we're gonna start establishing the points of your, your star. So the next one is gonna be three half double crochets into the same stitch. So one, two and three. You're gonna notice your project will appear like it's buckling but it, you just gotta uh, trust in me. It, it's gonna open up. You just gotta watch it. The next one stitch available to you is then a single crochet. So the repeat pattern all the way around is the next one is gonna be three double crochets into the same stitch again. And you're gonna start seeing the peaks. There should be a total of six of them by the time you get all the way around. Once you get that one done the next one is a single crochet. Okay the next one will be three double crochets again. So one, two and three. Okay and then the next one is a single crochet. And the next one is three double crochets once again. So one, two, and three and the next one is a single crochet. Okay the next one is three into the next one. So one, two, and three. Next one is a single and let's see if we can see how many points there are. So there's one, two, three, four, five. So the next one is gonna be three double crochets in that one anyway. I remember that. <laughs> if it, you just gotta keep it in sequence. So three uh, double crochets and followed by a single crochet. So this is it. That's all the way around. The first one we started with a single crochet. So this is the single crochet that separates this group of three and this group of three. So just join it together with the slip st stitch and that concludes that round there. Things are gonna relax in the middle here so you don't, you, you don't need to worry about that at this moment. But what I want you to do is that we have to fasten off your yarn. This is how I'm going to show you how to do it for this whole thing. Even with the pip squeak you can do it as well. So just take the yarn and put it over and I want you to weave that yarn tail in and out 
of about two inches worth of, of stitch work on the top. And the next time we come around this we're gonna be going right into these stitches and so then it's gonna bury right underneath and therefore you don't have to worry about using a darning needle to sew in any of this stuff. And that concludes that round number two. Let's grab our next color and let's move up. So I'm gonna start off next with yellow and move up to round number three and I'm gonna do my next color. So in the instructions because it was it was gonna use the same color as before in, in the baby um, pipsqueak version we have to just move over one. So right where you did the slip stitching on where everything finished. Let me just uh, get this over. So right where I joined it okay. We have to start in the first double crochet of the group of three. Okay and just going into the top of the, the stitch of the first double crochet and just join it and then we begin this round. So we're gonna chain three. So one, two and three. Okay that counts as a double crochet. Lay this straggler down on top the line so you can trap it into position. Now we're going to start having the stitch work open up on the peaks. So the next double crochet is the middle one of the group of three and you are going to put the same thing in every time now that you go into a corner. It's gonna be two double crochets to start followed by chain two and then two double crochets into the same stitch again and that will create a beautiful point that you need. Okay, continuing to keep this underneath and you can uh, do great job and great things with it. The next double crochet is the last one of the group of three. You're going to put in a double crochet there and this time you are going to skip the next single crochet and then just double crochet right into the next double crochet of the group of three and it's gonna be one into that one and now you're on the middle one of the group of three again. So that means it's a point so it's gonna be this time it's two double crochets. So every time you've got a point for this whole thing it's gonna be the same thing. Two double crochets, chain two and two double crochets. Then you're gonna come into the next one or just the third one of the group of three and just one double crochet each. So the next stitch is the single crochet which you're gonna skip over. You're gonna come to the next group of three and the first one is gonna be one double crochet by itself and then this the middle one of the group of three is gonna be another point. So it'll be two double crochet first followed by chain two and two double crochets. And then the next one is gonna be one double crochet by itself and then you're back to the single crochet in the middle so you skip over. So I want you to do that all the way around. This thing is going to look like uh, a pentagon or sorry a hexagon but it's not gonna stay looking like a hexagon for very long. So continue to do the same patterning going all the way around. So I'm coming up near to the end of this. This is the final point that I'm creating. So this is going to establish your whole points in this particular round number three. And then that's my point there and the next one is just a double crochet by itself. And where we started okay was this is the single crochet so we're gonna skip over that and we're just going to join it to the top of the beginning chain three. And that will pull it in nice and tight for you. So we're, we're, we're right where we are right now we're in the wrong spot. So what we have to do whenever we hit this round and you have them leaning over like this because the next round we're gonna have them so that it fills in the gaps in the middle is that we have to move over by a slip stitching to the next stitch available so that we're second in. Okay so you're second in and then you chain three. One, two, three. The only difference of this round and the last round is that there's more spaces in between the corners. So therefore you have to fill them in with your double crochets. So that you can see you've got another double crochet here before a corner. So you're gonna put a double crochet there and now you're into the corner. So the corners are identical to what you already know and those are two double crochets, chain two and two double crochets all in the same stitch or same gapping space. Now you're gonna move down. So what you have to watch for is that the first one in here just go right above it. Okay so there's one and I'm gonna give you some visual cues. You're gonna do the next one 
and this one you gotta watch for. So you can see that, see this is the single crochet that you skipped. These two are leaning into each other. So and this round what we have to do is that we're gonna put these two together. So how we're gonna do that is that we're gonna go into the top one of the next stitch, pull through a loop. We're gonna go into the top one of the next stitch, pull through a loop. You now have three loops. Yarn over and pull through all three. That was the single crochet two together. So these two now just uh, squash together and it's perfect. And now you end up with the right stitch counts again to go up this side. So if you remember the way we started here there was two here before a gap and then when we finished this one there was two here before you hit the single crochet. So you don't physically have to count those if you don't want to but if you know what you're looking for it's a lot easier. So now you're gonna double crochet the next two going back to the next point. And then we're back in the point. So it's the same thing. So it's two double crochet followed by chain two and two double crochet. And now we're moving down the other side. So I'm looking to where the two are leaning into the middle. So I wanna ignore those and I have two before it. So that means that I'm in the proper count. So I'm gonna double crochet the first two and then the next two are the ones that are leaning over toward the middle. So we're gonna just join them together with the single crochet two together. So just going right into the next stitch, pull through. Okay, next stitch, pull through. You got three on your hook, pull through all three. And now we start going up the other side. So just continue that same idea going all the way around and I'll see you back here in just a moment. So I'm coming up all the way around and I want to finish off this color. I'm only doing two rounds of every color until and right to the very end. So now that I get my two, the last two are the ones that are leaning right into the middle and I'm gonna finish this with the single crochet two together and then I'm just gonna slip stitch it to the top of the first chain three that we had started with. So when we shifted over one in this particular round we were just making room so that we could do this uh, single crochet two together at the end. So you're just gonna join it with a slip stitch and therefore finish this yarn off. So I'm just gonna trim it and I'm just gonna weave it in. So just pull it through the loop and weave it in. So I'm going to show you the next two rounds and then that's it for this whole thing because it's just a matter of repeating uh, just to make sure that you understand the concept. So there's going to be two different rows that are two different rounds that you're doing with this whole thing as you go. So in one round we are leaning over and creating a little mini gap and in the next one we fill in the gap. Do you see that? So they're leaning in and the next one we fill in. So let's move along and keeping right where we finished off is where we're gonna start next and let's begin. So let's begin this row. So we're repeating this row and the next row over and over and over again. The only difference is, is that you get more distance between the corners. So right where we did the single crochet two together we wanna skip that and go to the first double crochet that's available to you. So in this round we're gonna skip over the single crochets that are right in the middle and then in the next round we fill them in. So just going right into the top of the first stitch available to you after the single crochet and then just chain three. One, two, three. Laying down the straggler on top of the line so it gets stuck underneath you are going to single or sorry double crochet yourself all the way up until you get to a point. So you hit every one of them going all the way to the point. This time it's four. The last time it was three. You see that? So now on the corner here you're going to do exactly the same thing is just two double crochet. It gets easier to do this as you move up and then chain two and then two double crochet. And then you're gonna move down the line. Okay, so what you wanna watch out for is that single crochet that's right here. You don't wanna touch that at all. So we're gonna just move our way down. So remember the first stitch is right above this first one here. So if you shift over one and miss that you're gonna end up with uh, points that are not equal. So you just gotta look for that. So one double crochet into each until you get to that single crochet that you're gonna skip over. Okay, the next one is the single crochet. Okay, I can see it here. See how that's coming together? And so I'm gonna go to the next one. So skip this stitch and go to the next one. And if you have to physically count it then count it by all means. So this side 
after the, the corner was done we had one, two, three and four. See this side here one, two, three and four so I know I'm in balance. So this side one, two, three and four and then I'm on a corner again. So the corners will always be the same of two double crochet, chain two and two double crochet. So please do that all the way around for this round. So I'm coming up all the way around and I'm just going to finish this off and I jump over that one single crochet right in the middle and I just join it to the top of the chain three. So that row or round is done. So in this round we skipped over the single crochet and in the next round like you skipped over all of all of them just like you see and now let's move along. So in this round here what we have to do is that we always have to shift over to the second one over. Okay, so we're gonna just slip stitch to the second one over and then begin. So one, two, three counts of the double crochet and you're just gonna move yourself up. Do not get confused when you do this uh, slip stitching sometimes it appears over the first one but it's not. So you just gotta just make sure that when you start doing your double crochets you're into the right position. It will shift into the proper location at a later time. Okay, so you just gotta trust in it. So you're just gonna double crochet yourself all the way to the corner again. And there will be another extra stitch now because of this and then in the corners is always the same. So two double crochet followed by a chain two and two double crochet and then you come down the other side. So this is the second part of the of the round. So the first one we did set slightly different in the middle. This one is gonna be different again. So we're gonna come down and we're going to look for the two middle ones and stop and we're gonna put those together with a single crochet. So I just kinda like do it and then as I, my fingers feel like I'm getting closer to it or I visually see it then I kinda just slow down and see where I am. So I think it's the next one. So see how they're leaning into each other? There's the single crochet. So those two are gonna become one. So just gonna bring those together with the single crochet two together like so and then just continue then to double crochet the next one all the way to the point. So this is how you do this particular afghan. It's actually really quite simple. Yeah, um, you can get to 64 inches in diameter um, with the ones that are for the fluffy unicorn and then at the fluffy unicorn the final purple or the final revolution if you're following the color scheme you have to do half double crochets. So instead of doing double crochets you're just gonna do half doubles for the final revolution and that will make it so that you have enough yarn to be left with and then you're gonna trace it then with the original color that's in the middle. In my, my case it was red and let me just pull up the example and all you're just gonna do then is just single crochet yourself around a border. So all you're just gonna do is starting and stopping exactly where you were in the middle is that you just trace it. So on the ends here there would be three single crochets here in the, in the turn and then just single crochet into each and then I just continue to single crochet right over top so I don't put them together at all. It's just that I continue to single crochet all the way around like that, that and it gives it a really kind of a clean border idea. So this is how you would do the Bernat Pipsqueak uh, Star Blanket or the Fluffy Unicorn Blanket. Both are the exact same stitches but you can physically see the stitch work here when it's done in a different color and different type of yarn. So until next time it's Mikey on behalf of the Crochet Crowd as well as Yarnspirations.com. Have a great day. We'll see you again real soon. Bye bye.